Hey everybody, my name is Cristano. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, hit the subscribe button. If you're not new here, welcome back friends and family. So today I'm gonna to be working on this dresser. So I picked this up off of Facebook Marketplace. It's already painted and on camera, it actually kind of matches my hair a little bit. But I'm not gonna keep it like this. I picked it up like this. I am going to strip the top off so that we can see the wood. It is mahogany. And so I really want to bring back that wood or at least see what it looks like underneath. I'm not really sure what kind of shape it's going to be in. And then it's got good bones, but I am going to do, I have been doing decoupage a lot on stuff and this piece will be no different. I am going to do decoupage on it, but I have an idea. So I am going to be using this paper. Okay. So if you guys want to see that, stay here. The first thing I wanted to do was remove the paint off the top of this piece. I like using the Jasco Premium Stripper. It's pretty strong and works really well. So what I do is I put a thick layer on the entire piece and allow it to sit for about 15 minutes. Once it's done sitting, I go in and when I know there's multiple layers of paint, I will use a metal scraper. And so that's what I'm gonna do is scrape off this with the metal scraper and just kind of see what's under there. What I found is that there is another layer of paint under there. So I'm definitely going to have to repeat this process multiple times. So once I have scraped all of the top layer off, I will apply more stripper on there and allow it to sit again and see where we are. After my second coat sat for about 10 minutes, you can start seeing the bubbling on there. And for me, usually that means that we're getting closer to the wood finish. So you can see it kind of bubbling and shrinking up. That is a good sign. And so what I did is I took my scraper and I scraped it off and it came off really easily. So I will say that this layer of white paint came off a little bit easier than that pink paint did, but now you can see the wood finish underneath. And so that to me is a success. So I'm gonna scrape this all off and then we're gonna assess what's going on. I may do one more coat and then use a plastic scraper that I use a lot with my scoop just to get any residual off and then we will assess what else we need. So right here I'm using the plastic scraper to get really all that excess paint off. Once I cleaned this up and I allowed it to dry, I took my three x four electric ray and I started with an 80 grit and I just started trying to get that finish off, any residue. I tried to get the excess paint that may have not come off with my stripper. So I'm starting with an 80 grit, going to a 120 grit and just trying to see where this finish is, if there's any damage underneath. So sad news, the finish on this is about 99%, no, 95% perfect. There was a spot where the veneer was blown and then there's a spot where they did a fix, which wouldn't be a big deal, but there's also a lot of paint in the wood grain. And I have one of two choices. Either I have to sand it, which risks runs the risk of blowing the veneer, or I have to take a small needle and try to dig it all out and I'm not going to. So we will be painting the top of this piece and you know, uh, you live and you learn, but at least I was able to show you guys how to strip a piece of furniture. I have cleaned and scuff sanded this piece and now I'm gonna go in with Purico's gray primer. So the main thing for me about painting previously painted pieces is checking to see how durable the paint is. And so I go through and sand and get any of the flaking paint off. And if everything else is smooth and it's on there and it doesn't come off easily, then I'm okay with painting over it. I also pulled all the drawers out and I sanded really well all around the drawers on the body of the piece. So that way we could get any of that excess paint off of that. We will be decoupaging and I've showed this before, but I'm going to show it again. First of all, I'm using my brand new small brush called color equals happiness. And this brush I have been dipping in water and I'm going around the edges to kind of create a jagged outline. It's much easier to blend out a 
kind of ripped jagged edge than it is straight edges on decoupage. And so I'm carefully just pulling that off around the edges. And then once it's dry, that is the image that I'm going to decoupage on this piece. I wanna show you something that's really important when you're decoupaging. If you are doing something that has a nose or eyes and you've got cracks and crevices on a piece, make sure that you look at how it's positioned first. So I'm gonna show you here. If you put his eyes over that edge, look at what happens. It makes the eyes look wonky and it makes them look distorted. Once you've positioned your paper where you want it, you're going to lay down your decoupage medium. And this one I'm using my There Are No Rules in Art brush. That's another brand new brush that I just came out with. Remember that if you have a piece, an image that has eyeballs or something like that, so if it's a, you know, a creature of some sort, then make sure that you are putting those eyes on the flat part of a surface so that way the image does not get distorted. So what I'm doing is I am taking saran wrap, plastic wrap, whatever you call it, cling wrap, and I'm wrapping it in a ball and I'm just carefully putting it over top of this paper. It helps get out some of the wrinkles. Now, I don't want this piece to be perfect. I want it to be slightly wrinkly, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time pushing the wrinkles out, but you can also put your decoupage medium or top coat over top of the paper and gently smooth out any wrinkles that way as well. And so that will help you smooth your paper out. And also you definitely wanna go over the top of it so that way it is sealed. I will be using two brand new colors by Purico called Brumby and Macaroon. This is a paint company out of Australia. And you can see over there to the right side, I did one half Brumby and now I'm painting over it with Macaroon. And I'm just gonna gently go around the edge of my paper. Now I make sure my paper is completely dry before I do this. The reason why I did two different colors is because I want one side to have a darker base and one to have a lighter base to just give it even more dimension. You could do all one color if you want to. I just was kind of experimenting to see what would happen. The next part is where we're going to blend out the paper and create the stone look. So I am using my Happy Creating brush and on the screen I'm gonna tell you each time what colors I'm using. So here's the thing, you can use whatever kind of paintbrush you want. I like my paintbrushes that I created because I have tested these and been really rough with them and they are great for stippling and that's what you're gonna need to do. You're gonna have to do a lot of stippling and pouncing in this technique. So. You're gonna see on the screen the colors that I'm using. I interchange these colors and layer them consistently throughout the entire piece. So really all this is, is just pouncing and stippling and kind of paying attention to what's going on. So obviously right here, I wanna make this a little bit more gray. And so I'm going to use Brumby and I'm going to use back roads and things like that, the darker colors to kind of make those areas a little bit darker. And then when I get away from the horse, I'm going to lighten it up a little bit. So the key to this faux stone look is to just have different colors layered and pounced on top of each other. You need to trust the process and you need to trust that it's going to work. So if you are looking at it right now and you're like, oh my gosh, this looks awful, because it doesn't look that great right now on the screen, but you're going to just toggle between the colors and just pounce each color and that way you're getting kind of a cloudy blend you can use your hands like you see me using and then i also take a rag and kind of dab in areas so that way if it's not quite blending that rag will allow it to blend In this part, I created more wisps of hair for the horse, which is something you can do. If you wanna make the decoupage paper your own design, you can add things on. You could paint flowers on the horse's head. You could paint a bird on the horse's head. You can create whatever you want with decoupage design, so you don't have to just stick with the original design that was created for you. So, I am going to video and show you how I have done this stone look and how I have blended this paper out. 
If I keep talking and explaining it to you, it's gonna be very repetitive. So I just want you to sit back and watch. Again, I am toggling between all the colors that I list on the screen and I will also put them in the description below. And it's really just a matter of being patient and toggling between. If your hand gets tired, walk away and come back, it's fine. So if you can see over to the right, that side is done and that was created by just layering and layering and switching colors and layering. And so really that's all you have to do. It's just a matter of being patient and trusting that your layers will eventually come together and create something awesome.
Once this is completely dry, I top coat it with Jolie's top coat, which is one of my favorite top coats. And although the silk finish is an all-in-one finish, I still used some I Love Hue paint. And honestly, I just, even if I'm using an all-in-one, I like to just put extra protection. All right, everybody, this piece is done. This video is done. Let me get out of the way so you guys can see. There it is. There it is. I'm going to have some close up photos and things like that, but I really, really like this piece. I hope you guys enjoyed that. And really one of the keys to this finish is to just continue to layer. So if it doesn't feel like it's looking like a stone finish, take a step back, let it dry, and then do another layer of your pouncing. Sometimes building up those layers is really what will give you that look. And so just be patient, use a test board if you want, but this piece is done. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Everything I use is in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe and until next time guys, happy creating, bye. Hey darling, can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Darling, we could get out of town, see the beautiful world around, want to see it now. Pack our bags and get in that car, leave a little note and we'll drive real far. Let's get out, we can leave this city, let's drive to the ocean. Sound is so pretty with the wind blowing in your hair. We can look back someday, baby. Don't you understand that we only get.